Hi, welcome back to Sub R, where I dive into different subreddits and read funny stories for your amusement. Do you like mildly inconveniencing people who've done you dirty? If you do, then you'll love r slash petty revenge. Let me know which one is your favorite. Mine has got to be the one about the towel and the bathrobe. Let's hop right into our first story, which was posted by Zoeth. Tell me to cover up in my own yard. Be beholden to my thighs every summer. So, this is more of an annual revenge thing. About five years ago, a greedy councilman put up three two-story apartments next door to our house. One of these has a direct view of our pool area, and a grouchy woman and her husband moved into it. Any hoot, as we have done in the 15 summers before they got there, we all went for an afternoon swim. The woman was on her balcony and made a huge dramatic fuss about going back inside and closing her curtains. She then screeched at her husband when he tried to go outside. It's not like we were indecent or anything, just in our swimsuits. We laughed about it and continued having a nice afternoon at the pool while she roasted inside. A few days went by, and I decided it was too hot to be inside and went for a dip. I was in the middle of uni, and this was the only time I'd leave the house between assignments and tests. Now, I don't have a body that stops traffic. I am a regular, plump human whose Dorito-loving habits have begun to show around the lower body area. I take off my sarong and jump into the pool. After a few minutes, I sense someone watching me, look up and find a man on the balcony smoking and staring right at me. I make a bit of an aggressive, what, gesture and he scurries back inside, only to return with his woman in tow. The conversation went something along the lines of, excuse me, could you not swim when my son is out here smoking? He just lost his job and this is the time he'd normally smoke and you're out here naked and distracting him. Ew. He's the age of my dad. He can smoke on your front balcony. I have lived here for, at the time, 15 years, so you can't blame me for being here naked. Which I'm not. I'm swimming. I'm just asking you to be considerate, okay? At this point, the grown-ass man-baby was looking smug. If you don't like it, then move. And I continued swimming. They stood there for another 5 minutes before once again going back inside and closing the sliding patio doors and curtains. Also, I was not naked or indecent. I wear full swimsuits because I'm a little insecure about my belly. See paragraph about the Doritos. I told my parents and the next day my mom joined me in the pool to show them and I quote, what real traumatizing thighs look like. But that got me thinking though. I could make their summer a living hell if closing all their curtains was how they'd go about seeing us in the pool. So now, every summer, weather permitting, I go out and flash my thighs for a few hours in the afternoon and have them roast up in their apartment. It's been five years of this, and I will continue doing this until the day I leave home. Edit. I want to thank everyone who has given me ideas to be even more petty. My mom and I are getting a good chuckle out of it, and I am now on Amazon looking for a hairy dude swimsuit. Also, you guys have been so wholesome about this. My Dorito thighs give thanks for the acceptance. What in the world? Who moves next door to a house that has a pool in their backyard and then gets mad for someone swimming in a swimsuit? What do you want them to do? Wear jeans? The next story was posted by Ace-2112. I'll take that in $1 bills. Thanks. So, this is the deal. Yesterday, I get a call from a friend that the money I lent him to move out of state was going to be paid by wire transfer. The place he used is about 20 minutes away, so I jump in the car and head on up. Stand in line for 30 minutes to get to the cashier. Spend another 10 minutes verifying everything only for her to look at my ID. Oh, I see they didn't put Junior after your name. I'm not going to release the money till they fix it. Okay, let me call them real quick. I don't care what you do but you won't be doing it from right here. You'll have to go outside to do that. So, off I go to get two letters added to the transaction. Another 30 minutes to take care of that. Finally, the company rep calls her store to tell her to release the funds. Then another 10 minutes to wait online again. So now, I'm a couple hours into this for two letters. My petty meter is full by now. When she asks me how I want my cash, I reply, one dollar bills, please. What? That will take forever. My shift ends in a few minutes. I don't care. I'll still take it in one dollars. Thank you. 
So she pulls out the stacks of ones and starts to count bundles. No, I'm going to need you to verify each of those stacks are correct. Would you please break them down? With much grumbling and huffing and puffing under her breath, we finally come to the end of counting the ones. All 1,000 of them. Well, at least you didn't ask for it in pennies. That would be pro-revenge. Our next story was posted by I am a French furry. Try to save 0.01 seconds on the subway. Wait 30 more minutes for a bus. I was at a subway station a couple days ago getting back from uni. As I got off the subway to line up and go up the escalators, this middle-aged lady nudged me out of the way just as I got on the steps and made me trip over and fumble my bag. She stared at me and went on her way. I was right behind her going up and she probably saved like 0.01 seconds getting on the escalator before me. As we made our way to the exit and I got up to the door frame, she went out of her way to nudge past me again. She gave me another stare as she went through the exit and stood there looking at me like she couldn't believe I tried to go first or something. There's a bus terminal that connects the subway on a street level and we ended up waiting at the same stop. She was the first in line and I was right behind her. When the bus finally arrived, she really took her time fumbling through her purse, talking on her phone, and looking for her Presto card. Side note, a Presto card is a card that you load money onto to use public transit in Toronto. As she was searching for her card, she ended up dropping it right at the tip of my boot. She was still busy talking on the phone while searching through her wallet. I thought about it for a second, and decided to lightly slide her card underneath the bus with my foot. Eventually, she realized that she might have dropped her card, so she packed her wallet back in her purse, hung up the phone, and looked around for her card. As she looked, she began getting increasingly worried, scanning everywhere for where she could have dropped it. I nudged her out of the way, gave her a stare, and made my way onto the bus. I sat myself happily on one of the seats. I saw her flustered and panicked as the next bus was coming in half an hour. The bus started to depart, and I opened the window and told her with glee, Maybe you should check under the bus. I watched her for as long as I could until she was out of sight and enjoyed the rest of my commute home. OP, I give you a 5 out of 5 for your successful petty revenge. However, Toronto winters are pretty cold, so I'm going to have to give you a 5 out of 5 for being a donkey as well. Our last post was submitted by MightMary007. You leave me a bathrobe, I leave you a towel. In college, I went through a phase where I hated the color pink and refused to include it in my wardrobe. I didn't begrudge other people their right to wear pink. I was simply not, and am still not, a girly girl. And I was sick of everything marketed to women being this color. Toys to play with, buy it in the pink aisle. Cute little kid outfits, pink. Then, as an adult, kickboxing gloves, pink. Earmuffs for the gun range, pink. But I digress. The point was, I didn't like pink, and many people knew this about me. I lived in an all-girls dorm through college. One day after showering, I reached out to grab my light blue bathrobe with yellow stars. What I found instead was a garish, gaudy, hideous, bright hot pink bathrobe left in place of mine. I stared at this monstrosity, considering my options. Option 1 was to wear the robe, but there was a catch. Certainly, there would be cameras waiting for me outside the bathroom. I could stomach wearing the robe. Dry is dry, right? but I refused to give anyone the satisfaction of photo evidence, which would doubtless be passed among the dorms so many could laugh at my expense. Option two was to go out naked. Same problem, the cameras. Also, I was uncomfortable doing this. That left option three, the shower curtain. The curtain was not grimy nor mildewy, but yuck. A dorm curtain? Who knows how old? I spent a few more minutes deliberating. Then, I did it. I pulled down the bar and slid the curtain off, wrapping it around myself like a toga. Shoved the pink abomination into the garbage can and strutted into the hallway. Camera flashes went off. Someone yelled my full name in a scolding way I haven't heard since I was a kid. Gasps and giggles surrounded me. Later, one person said I looked like a Greek goddess. I had one. Back in my room, I learned the culprits were my good chums, Tara and Stacy. Names changed to protect the guilty. I vowed to get them back. I just didn't realize my chance would come so soon. Later that evening, I went to use the restroom, and I heard them in the showers. They were roommates, getting their evening hair wash in and chatting idly. Sure enough, there were their towels and pajamas stacked neatly by the stalls. They had not heard me yet and were completely oblivious to my presence. I stared at the clothes and considered my options. Option 1 was to leave them with nothing. 
Nah, I'm mischievous, but I'm not evil. Therefore, I went with option two. I left exactly one towel. Then, quietly as I could, I gathered up their other towel and clothes, crept from the bathroom, and tossed their belongings back in their dorm room. Now, I may not be evil, but I am still a little devious. That's why I locked their door before I shut it. The squeals and cries of dismay were music to my ears. Tara came out in a towel and went to their room to get Stacy's clothes. Nope, she was locked out. My memory is foggy, but I like to think she yelled my name like a cartoon villain yells a hero's name as he escapes. Ultimately, she then had to go to our RA for the key, wearing nothing but a damp towel. My petty vengeance was complete. Following this incident, an armistice was called and peace returned to the dorm. This actually reminds me of a story back in high school where my school went on a trip to Montreal. A couple of my friends thought it'd be funny to play pranks on people while they were in the shower. One of these pranks involved sneaking into the washroom and stealing someone's clothes, towels, and anything else in there that they could have used to cover up. We were at a hotel and we had the whole floor basically in our room waiting for him to come out. He was pretty smart because he came out with a shower curtain wrapped around him. We all laughed and told him that his clothes were at the elevator and he had to go get it before it went downstairs. As soon as he got to the elevator, we were all screaming down the hall letting him know that his clothes had been in the room the whole time. That's when he decided to drop the curtain and run down the hall butt naked towards us to get his clothes. Definitely one of the funniest and most traumatic experiences of my life. That concludes this episode of Petty Revenge. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you have any suggestions for subreddits I should visit, let me know in the comments below, and I will see you next time.